Hey, it's me, MLB. This is chapter 64 of Touched. This one is titled Reunion. You'd better not be screwing with me or else I'll end you, Darby snarled. Definitely not messing with you, Toya. I want to see things turn out for the better, for all of us, Hawk said as he brushed himself off. Meet at the hideout tomorrow, Darby said darkly as he turned and walked away. I want to see her. Make it happen. Hawks nodded as Darby left, his whole body shaking with adrenaline. Slowly, he made his way back to where you were on the building roof. Kiko, he wailed as he managed to fly out the side of the building. Don't do any more, you're hurt. You quirked me, didn't you? He panted, one eye swollen and puffy, charred marks and singed feathers down his right side. What word did you use? Well, how did you feel? You asked. Invincible, he replied. If it wasn't for you using your quirk on me, I would have taken you and run. But your quirk gave me the confidence to go back and confront Dart. Toya, and I think it's for the better, maybe, he said, his breathing becoming a little more normal. Why, what happened? you asked as you scooted in beside him and rested his arm across your shoulder to help him walk. I'll explain when we get home, he said with a weak smile as he bent his head and kissed the top of your head. Thank you for using your quirk on me. You did good, baby, he added tenderly. You smiled to yourself as you helped him down the stairs of the building and called for a taxi to take you both home. Back at home, you tended to his wounds as best you could and preened his charred feathers, getting him to deploy the ruined ones so that new ones could grow in their place, then you snuggled up together in bed and fell asleep. Early the next morning, Hawks was up and awake, making phone calls. What are you doing, Key? You mumbled from under the covers that he had placed over you while he hopped out of bed. Ah, I was making some calls to help a friend, he said with a soft smile as he tucked his phone into his pocket and bent down to give you a kiss. I've already called in sick again for you today, so don't get out of bed. You just rest. I'm leaving feathers here again to keep an eye on you. But what about you? You need those feathers, you croaked in your just woke up voice. My small feathers have grown back already, he said with a smile. I have enough to fly, but not to fight or to go at great speeds. I'm not intending to take on anyone today anyway, he said with a small chuckle. I'll be fine. I'm invincible. Is my quirk still working? You asked with surprise. No, baby. But just having you by my side makes me invincible, he said lowly as he leaned back down and kissed you tenderly all over your cheek and jawline. You just keep growing our baby and keep being perfect and that's good enough for me, he added. You melted. Kigo, you flatterer, you giggled. It's true though, he replied with a giant smile. Okay, I better go. I'll be back, baby. And with that, he left to go and keep his promise to Darby. A few hours later, Hawks met Darby alone at the hideout. You need to drink this serum, Hawk said to him. Screw you, I'm not drinking that, he said. I don't trust you, you red-feathered idiot. Oh, you called me by my pet name, Hawks cooed teasingly. See, we're still close. Here, I'll give you my blade feathers, he said as he plucked his longer feathers out and handed them to Darby. If I've crossed you, then you can slice me open, he said casually. This serum turns you invisible, so I can get you in and out of your mum's place without being seen. I also have a few other serums to repeat the process a few times. And what about the part where she'll forget about seeing me? Darby asked as he took the serum from Hawks. Yeah, got that too, Hawks said with a smile as he patted his pocket. Darby grunted in acknowledgement as he cracked the bottle open and drank it. I lied, it's love serum, Hawks dead pant as Darby swallowed. Darby gave him a dead look. <laughs> I'm joking, bro, Hawks chuckled. You're an ass, Darby said with a scowl. I could burn you to the ground right now. Ah, but you won't, because you need me to take you to your mum, Hawks replied with a smug grin. Darby shoved his hands in his pockets as his form disappeared as a re the result of the potion. Okay, you're invisible now, but don't talk around people because they can still hear you, Hawks said as he started walking off to the, towards the respite building. So if I say something, people will just assume that it's you that's spoken, Darby leered. I know what you're thinking, but don't, Hawks replied dryly not even bothering to try and look in Darby's direction. Darby chuckled deviously. Good morning, Hawks, the receptionist greeted the winged hero brightly. You look like you've had a bit of a bingle. Oh, Hawks chuckled as he touched his bandaged cheek. Yeah, ran into an old friend, he said with a laugh. Darby kicked the back of his leg. The receptionist smiled. Well, I hope you get better soon. Are you here to see Mrs. Lynn? She asked. Uh, no, actually, I'm here to see Ray Todoroki, he said with a smile. Oh, she'll be happy to see you, the receptionist replied with a gentle smile. Enjoy your visit. Thank you, Hawks replied as he walked past the desk, heading for Mrs. Todoroki's room. 
Once upstairs, he walked to her door and knocked. Hawks, she said with a bright smile as she opened it. Come in. Thank you, Ray. Are you well? He asked as he placed his hand on the door to hold it open as he gestured for Ray to lead the way back inside. What brings you here? She asked with a smile as she sat down on the bed. Uh, I don't know how exactly to say this or where to start, but I've brought someone here to see you today, Hawks said softly as he sat down on the chair by the desk. Oh, who is it? Ray asked, looking at the door expectantly. Oh, you'll need to drink this first, Hawks said as he pulled the small vial from his pocket and handed it to her. What is it? Ray asked curiously. It's a serum. Just trust me, Hawks replied with a smile. Ray opened it and drank it slowly. Hawks then took another vial from his pocket and handed it back to the invisible Darby, who took it and drank it. Ray's eyes shot wide open when she saw the vial float out of Hawks' hand and a little way behind him. Slowly Darby's form was revealed and he stood there with a stoic expression on his face as his mother looked at him apprehensively. Who are you? she whispered fearfully. Your eldest, Darby replied, his jaw muscle flexing. Toya! Ray gasped as she stood up slowly with a hand over her mouth in shock, her eyes filling with tears. Darby nodded, pushing his hands further into his pockets. Ray walked slowly over to him and then reached a hand out to caress his cheek and jaw, running her fingers over his gnarled, charred flesh. Darby didn't move. He stood still, letting his turquoise eyes travel over his mother that he hadn't seen since childhood. My baby, Ray whispered in a quivering voice. What did they do to you? Killed me, Darby replied, his voice breaking slightly as Ray stepped closer and snaked her arms around his middle, sobbing softly into his chest. And that's the end of chapter 64. Stay tuned for chapter 65.